So what are microservices? You may have heard about them, but what are they? Are they just the same as normal services? Is this just service-oriented architecture 2.0? I always draw services like this, microservices like this. They're hexagons. I like this idea. It's an homage to Alistair Coburn's original paper on hexagonal architecture. They also have names. They have names that give you some idea what this system is actually doing. The definition I like using is this. Small autonomous services that work well together. Small, we'll get to that in a moment. Autonomous services, autonomy is a really important thing. It's a really important characteristic of what microservices are. This is all about in the ability to change components independently. The problem, of course, is, is this sort of tension. We want things that can change and evolve independently from each other, but they've got to work together. We'll be touching on this throughout the rest of the course. They have some key characteristics. Typically, we're talking about independent processes. Processes which are, you're scaling here by process. You're not necessarily just putting all of these things into a single container. They communicate predominantly over APIs or perhaps via events or messages, rather than using, say, database integration, which can cause many problems, and we'll talk a bit about that later on. They also have a very high degree of autonomy. You know you're doing microservices well when you can take one service, make a change, and deploy it independently into production without having to touch anything else. They're also small and focused on doing one thing well. The size, that's kind of an interesting conversation. But focus on doing one thing well is important. This comes back to one of the key criteria we really look for in microservices, which is trying to func uh, sort of structure them around a business domain. We'll talk about why that's important in our first part of our first principles. We should, though, talk a little bit about service-oriented architecture. What are the relationships between microservices, these small independent services that communicate over an API, and service-oriented architecture? Service-oriented architecture, or SOA, is a term that's been around since around 1996. The core idea is just that if we take a big, say, monolithic system and break it up into smaller services that work together, that we get a whole load of benefits from that. In as much as that definition is correct, Microservices are just a form of service-oriented architecture, albeit perhaps maybe more a more opinionated way of doing SOA. SOA didn't really have too much prior art when we first started building those systems. I spent much of the last 10 years dealing with SOA implementations that had numerous challenges. A lot of what I'm going to talk about today are practices and principles that have come from us doing SOA right. So if you want to talk about microservices as SOA done right, that's kind of okay by me. In many ways, we can think of SOA as being the overall idea and microservices as being a very specific implementation, much like, say, the Agile Manifesto defines what Agile is, and yet we have things like XP or Scrum as being approaches to delivering an Agile. We do have to talk a bit about size. The word micro. Some people don't like the word micro. How big is a microservice? Of course, the correct answer is 42. I joke, but the challenge is often when we talk about things like lines of code, that different languages and different platforms make those comparisons a bit difficult. I may, for example, be able to write in one line of closure code what might take me 10 or 15 lines of Java code just because one language is more expressive than the other. I have certainly seen microservices that are down to 50 lines of code or smaller. I've also seen things that I still felt were focused on doing one thing and doing one thing well that were 10,000 lines of code. As you get better at microservices, you will often find benefits taking those code bases smaller and smaller, which is why some of those organizations that practice this to maybe to an extreme degree do get down to small numbers of lines of code. But don't fixate on that. Fixate on thinking about my microservice should be focused on doing one thing and doing one thing well. And then if you want to, Later on, you may look to break that boundary down further into smaller constituent parts. So, microservices are small, autonomous services that work together.
independent processes communicating over APIs, focused on doing one thing and doing one thing well, that allow for independent change. How we go about building those sorts of things, that's what we're going to talk about shortly.